good day Sunbeam, what a bright time to be alive Initially, you know, it can be shocking. That's why people can come to course groups and, and have such resistance to the ideas because, because we are, have been trained to believe that, that the evil is, is outside of us and we haven't been trained to uncover the darkness within. Um, even though a lot of our religions have talked about, you know, your, your dirty, lowly sinner and so on and so forth, that, and, and forgiveness is the answer, it's like, how, how do we go within and uncover that? And if everything in the world is a pictorial representation of my consciousness, my thoughts, then that's pretty intense because when people start thinking of, like you mentioned, Osama bin Laden and terrorist and you know, Mussolini and Hitler and Saddam Hussein and Jeffrey Dahmer and on and on and on and on, it's, it can be shocking. Uh, but what we can say is that, that there is a, the, the ego is the darkness, the ego is the belief that God isn't real that there is no God, that love isn't real, it's the belief in, in separation. The ego is a death wish. So if our mind has been given over to a death wish, then, and it projected out a world based on that death wish, then it shouldn't even be that surprising. The, the pestilence, the disease, the war, the terrorism, bombs blowing up in neighborhoods like Boston, children, getting shot and so on and so forth, it's, it's actually horrifying to think that that's just a reflection of thoughts and that that has anything to do with who you are. Not even as your reality, but just even your, in your transitional phase of not knowing who you are. That's why the darkness is pushed out of awareness. When people go through like sexual abuse, we'll say, or memories of sexual abuse, it's quite common for these men or women to completely blot those memories out of awareness because they're so horrific. Or, you know, you see lots of movies that come out where Vietnam vets come back and they're trying to adjust and adapt into society and then they get these flashes, you know, uh, like that movie that Tom Cruise did years ago, Born on the Fourth of July, where they had the prep veterans coming by in a parade and then they start to fire the guns and you can see the veterans start to you know react because of the gunshot it's like memories of who knows what all that's what that whole movie was about about friendly fire and shooting one of your own and horrific things and imagine that out of all those horrific memories that there's a, there's even a more horrific memory that's underneath all of those and that's the belief that you could separate from your creator not just separation from mom and dad, but separation from your divine creator. And how horrific that must have been to think that you could actually fall from grace. That you could leave heaven. That you could leave nirvana. And so that's what the unconscious mind is about. That Carl Jung talked about, the shadow. Uh, Jesus talks about it as well in the Course. He says you have a two-tier self-concept. You have the face of innocence, which is like your surface personality mask. And that is, you know, sometimes wet with tears at the injustices of the world and, you know, it, it thinks it can be victimized and it's hit in, in different angles during, during its lifetime. But that was made to cover over what's below it, which is so dark that Jesus describes the unconscious, the lower level of the self-concept as draped with sin. Draped with sin. It's that dark. He says you couldn't bear to even look upon it. That's why you made the top tier, the personality mask, the, the personality of the world, because so you would never have to look at that. Now the Holy Spirit of Jesus is saying, come, come inside, you know, we've got the lantern. We're going to show you that this dark thing that you believe you did, separate from God, really never happened. You never really had the power to break away from God, you know. It was a really a crazy idea to think that you could actually separate from your Creator. But because it's so buried in an unconscious mind, then we see a world that reflects all these different beliefs. Beliefs in atheism, beliefs in Gnosticism, beliefs in hellfire, 
you know, beliefs in, you know, there's just all these different tangents. And, of course, unity would be among, we would call it like new thought teachings. You know, there's, there's Mayor Baker Eddy, there's, there's the Fillmores, you know, you could go down, there's just so many, you know, uh, Joel Goldsmith, and there's a whole tradition, the whole new thought tradition is saying that, no, you are a divine being, and God created you perfect, and, and you are worthy of remembering that perfection. So what we're seeing is that we have to first start to realize that everything we perceive is a reflection of thoughts. And that when we perceive someone like Osama bin Laden, we're just seeing a projection of that guilt, a projection of that hatred and anger, and it's actually being acted out for us so that we can take a look inside and come to see the full extent of our own self-hatred, instead of just pointing the finger at the terrorist. We went to see that movie, was it Zero Dark Thirty? Yeah. And the thing that struck me about that movie was, at the end, the agent, the female agent, the CIA agent, who really was tenaciously pursuing Osama bin Laden, at the end, when she had the body of Osama bin Laden, and she kind of went off by herself, it was this look of like, like, now what? Like, she'd spent her whole career trying to get this one body, and then there's this dead body there, and it's like, okay. Like, you know, it was almost like she was seeing, at some level, it was just a projection. You know, was the world really safer because there was a dead body under her gaze? You know, I think a lot of people who watched that movie, that was a, kind of an interesting point. You know, when we keep following the ego's lens and the ego's teaching, we keep looking to blame somebody in the world. Blame our parents, blame terrorists, blame you know, politicians, blame police officers, or blame, you know, the, the people that pollute, or whatever. And the Course is just saying, you have to look upon the full extent of your own self-hatred before you'll be willing to let it go. You can't keep some of the hatred tucked down in the unconscious mind and think that you're going to be free and innocent when you're still harboring hatred and guilt and fear. So it's a deep journey, but we have great tools. We have, we have tremendous resources. We have, if we have the willingness, we will draw forth enormous witnesses to help us go through this ultimate healing that we are ready for now. And that's, that's my whole life. My life has been dedicated to having that experience for myself and then sharing with all kinds of examples and metaphors and parables and all the stuff like Jesus used. Now I've got Hollywood to use, you know? That's some great parables, huh? Don't you think? I go all over the world, everyone loves Hollywood. I, get, I go to South America, I get Spanish subtitles. Or Belgium or 